Hey everyone, I'm Boone. On today's episode of Monday Maps, I'm going to show you something pretty cool. I'm going to be pulling the raw data of my location history from Google Maps, bringing that into Adobe After Effects, and creating an animated map from that data. I've always wanted to try this out and it actually worked out pretty well, so I'm going to show you step by step how I did it and hopefully you'll be able to apply this technique in your own projects and create some cool maps. Now for this particular tutorial, I'm going to be using the premium After Effects plugin GeoLayers 3, but I'll also quickly show you how to bring this data into Google Earth Studio, which is a free program that also works with After Effects. As always, if you like maps in Adobe After Effects, be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell. And if you create something cool using this technique, please share it with me, tag me at Boonless Video. So before we can even begin to think about animating our location data, we need to actually set up our devices to record that location. So for that, you go to myactivity.google.com and you'll find a little parameter here for location history, which you can toggle on right here. And it tells you right here, saves where you go with your devices even when you aren't using a specific Google service to give you personalized maps, recommendations based on places you visited and more. Right here you can specify the devices um, that you have set up. You can have it automatically delete after a certain period of time. You can manually delete it. You can do bulk downloads. Now if you're concerned with privacy issues, just dive down and read the specifics of this and you'll be able to find out what Google is doing with your data. Now once you've got that set up and you've done a little bit of traveling over the course of a week or a month, you can go to your Google Maps and as long as you're logged in to your Google account, you can click on the menu and you can go and look at your timeline. And this is a really, really cool um, view here. You can see by year, month, day, you have this little graph view here, and then you have the map with all of your data points. Now I turned this on back in, I think the end of 2016. So this is showing me everywhere I've been um, over the past five years. Now I can specify it by year. So I can go back to 2016 and quickly get a view of where I was, go over to 2017. So it's really, really cool. So let me show you how we can take this data, export it out, and then do some animation. So I'm gonna go to a specific day here. Um, it was October the 4th, 2017. So this was a really cool day. My wife surprised me and took me on a road trip in the north of France. This is when we were living in the suburbs of Paris here. This is our apartment. And she surprised me and took me over to a place called Mont Saint-Michel. And this was actually the day that we were driving back. So Mont Saint-Michel is over here. We had a hotel here. And we drove back and went to the beaches of Normandy and looked around and traveled around there a bit and then drove all the way home. And if you look over here on the left, you can see all the specific details here of the duration that we drove, um, some stuff that we did walking. And as I scroll down here, you can look at it chronologically. And as I click on these, you can get, um, it'll kind of zoom in and show you the specific spots of the trip there. I can even click on the menu here and do place details or just remove it from my day. So if you're trying to be secretive about something, you can remove locations, so scandalous. But here I can click on the location and get more details about it. If I forgot something about the trip, I can zoom in and try to figure out what we did there. I'm assuming we just stopped here to get a little quick breakfast or something. But if I click on any of these spots, if I can click on the driving route here, it's gonna zoom and show you that specific route. And I can make changes, I can switch it. If the data wasn't exactly correct, I can switch it um, to all these different methods here. But I can click here and look at this driving route. Apparently we did some walking. Now some of this data may look inaccurate. Now there's some things you can do with that. If you look over here on our final route back to our apartment, this driving route here, it looks very detailed like it was snapping to the road and, and very well recorded. And I think the reason for that is is because we actually turned on Google Maps and mapped our route home. So I imagine that recorded it very specifically and it was pinging our phone. So this route looks pretty um, pretty detailed but if you come over here and you look when we left Mont Saint-Michel and came to the, the beaches of Normandy it just it just looks like a straight line so if I want to export this data I want to have some more specific uh, data points here so there's a few things we can do right here in the timeline to clean that up the first is I can look at the raw data so I can click on this little cog wheel down here and select show raw data that's gonna show me a bunch of the points here and again look at this route all of the data points recorded here if you zoom in you can see them so I'm assuming that once again I had Google Maps on and it was helping me out here. But we're in over here in Normandy, we were taking all these side roads and we were going, I don't think we were using Google Maps at all, but this, this area looks a little detailed, so I don't know if it um, tried to map us this way, but it looks like we actually went on this route here. So there's some ways we can fix this and what you can do 
is you can go and select the route here and there's this little magic wand tool and it says snap to road so let's see what this does it's going to snap so i think what it's doing here is going to um try to give us the best route that it might think that we took but as you can see here it veered it veers off here so what i can try to do is try to snap that to those data points here by just clicking and dragging and try to maybe match it up to where we actually were and sometimes this might not be the best option I can save that and then I can try this one as well let's try this one and see what happens snap to road all right yeah it's just picking the best route so again I'm gonna I'm gonna cancel that and I'm gonna pull the raw data back up so it doesn't look like it's taking the route that we actually took so it'll be interesting to see when I import it into the mapping software if it's going to import all these individual data points or if it's going to do the paths or a combination of them simplified I don't know now looking at the raw data for this walk we took out on the beach here it looks like it's incorrect however we walked pretty far out into the beach and the tide was low and you can see there's roads right here so this um, I imagine this is pretty correct all right very cool so I've got all the data points here I've tightened up the paths as best as I can and this is ready to be exported so to do that I'm gonna go back down to the cogwheel at the bottom here and just under show raw data I have export this day to KML. Now, not to get too technical here, but KML stands for Keyhole Markup Language, and this is essentially Google's geospatial data file format. And uh, way back in the day when Google Maps was first started, Google bought up a company called Keyhole, and that's where they got a lot of this tech from, so that's why um, th that file format is named that. So I'm gonna click on export. That's gonna send that to my downloads folder. And now over here you can see the file it says history 2017 has the date october 4th and it's like this little google earth pro logo now i'm going to head over to after effects and first i'm going to show you the premium method using a premium plugin called geolayers 3. now this costs a little under 300 dollars to get this but it allows you to really you know um, be a power user when you're creating maps inside of adobe after effects and if you're subscribed to my channel i'm sure you know all about this program so I have the project file open and I have the plugin panel open here for GeoLayers 3. And before I create a new map comp, I'm going to bring my KML file in. And I can do that via this little plus button here. It says add features to browser. So I'm going to import file. And I can navigate to my downloads and grab this KML. And if you look up here, you can see that GeoLayers works with a bunch of different um, geospatial uh, file formats. So this is the feature collection of my KML file. So if I open this up, it's going to show me all the details, all the points and paths. And you can see the symbols here for points and paths. Um, this is the hotel. This is where we had breakfast. So it looks like, indeed, it's not sending all of those individual data points. It's just sending the main ones, I think. So what I can do is I can double click on it, and it's going to zoom my map to that specific area, and then I can zoom out. Or I can select the feature collection and just double click and that's going to show me everything now here is where we can really start mapping so i'm going to create something really quickly i don't want this tutorial to focus too much on the animation side of things if you want to see how geo layers works you can go search geo layers tutorials either on my channel or youtube and you'll find a lot of great stuff but i just want to show you how quickly you can throw something together so i'm going to be moving fast here so i'm going to create a new map comp we'll quickly change this to ultra hd 4k and change some of the settings here now click next it doesn't matter about the style we'll keep the style here that's perfectly fine that's going to add all of our elements and assets that we need here for our map comp now i'm going to quickly finalize this frame so we can see what we're working with here and all i want to do right here is i'm going to create a quick animation showing um, basically the path going from our hotel back to our apartment so let me show you what we can do here really really fast so with my data down here, I'm going to grab all of the driving paths, which I think there's like five or six different ones, and I'm going to control click and select all of them. I'm going to merge these with the Merge Features button. That's going to create a new feature here called Feature Merged. I'm going to quickly name this Full Route. All right, so now I want to draw this, so I'm going to go select my Feature Styles. I'm going to really quickly create something new. Um, we'll just create something boring and obvious here, just a red line for our path here with no fill. And we'll set the stroke width to like 15 or something. I'll call this path. And now with this full route selected, if I click on draw features, that's going to draw that path there. So now I have my path. So to animate the route, I could come down here and just quickly add a trim paths animator. Let's say we want it to be 
about four seconds and then have a second buffer there. So I'm gonna add a keyframe on the end and then I'll bring that to zero here and now that'll animate on. So those are animating on simultaneously. We want them to animate on individually. So now we have this five second animation of our path moving along the French countryside, which is really cool. And now for the icons, I can go and select our actual locations. So let's select the hotel and I want to use like, I want to use some icons or symbology to show these. So what I can do is click on the label templates here and I can actually download some templates that are pre-created. I have icons and locators. So let's just do locators here and select responsive design for time. That means they're going to animate in and out automatically. So that's going to download those to our projects. And now when I go to templates, I have a bunch of different looks. So this is a hotel. I have um, a locator for hotel and there's also one with a bed. So let's select the one with the bed. And with my feature selected, I'm going to add a new label, add label. And that adds our label here, which uh, animates on. Very cool. We have the bed. Now I'm going to um, do something for my apartment. So I don't have a data point for my apartment. So I'll just do the city where I live. So that's called St. Germain en Laye. I can search for it here. And here it is. Um, but we need to select a label template. So let's do home, locator home. And with this selected, there's a shortcut right here for add label. There we go. And now I have the two museums down here. I have the Memorial Museum of Omaha Beach and this other museum here. So let's grab museums. We don't have museums. Let's do monument. Again, both of these features are selected. Okay, that's looking good. And now I'll just time these so that when the path hits, those animate on. So I'm doing this really quick. I would want to stylize this and get the color schemes right and kind of really, really design everything else. But you can see what I can create very quickly using this Google Map uh, location history data. One other cool thing I could do, let me show you really quickly, is I can go and grab, um, let me actually download these icons. I'm going to download the icons and then... And then I'm going to go back and grab the full route and I'm going to grab the car icon. And with the full route selected, I'm going to do label features. And then right down here, it says animate label along feature. So if I click on that, it's essentially going to take that icon and it's going to move it along my path. So if I go back to the route, let's just go ahead and um, turn off the animations here for the route. And now watch the icon. This is cool. So now we have that car icon moving along. As you can see, GeoLayers 3 is just insanely powerful. If you want to see more about it, um, please follow my affiliate link down in the video description if you're thinking about picking it up. If you're going to do any kind of map freelance work, you definitely have to have this. Now, if you don't want to drop that kind of cash on GeoLayers 3, you can go check out Google Earth Studio. This allows you to create um, animations using your Google Earth data or your Google Maps data uh, for free. So I can go set up a blank project. And the only thing is you do not have anywhere near uh, the, the capabilities that you do inside of uh, GeoLayers 3. So I'm just going to quickly show you something here. This is essentially a browser-based animation tool that allows you to create these really cool Google Earth animations and you can do some really cool stuff. So what I can do is I can go click on overlays and I can Im import that KML data. Since we're working natively with another Google tool, this makes it really easy. Upload from computer. I'm going to grab that KML file. I'll double click and now it brings up my overlays panel and it shows me all of these data points again and they're all checked on. So if I just double click this, it's going to zoom me straight to that location and here you can see what I've got going on here. Once again, you don't have the same capabilities here. You can do different animations, but to do all the icons and symbology and the same stuff I did in GeoLayers 3, it's really not um, possible inside of Google Earth Studio. You just can't get what you, you can't achieve what you can with GeoLayers 3. However, you can do some, you know, basic keyframe opacities um, and um, you can do some really cool animations in regards to like camera movement. Uh, and then you can set track points and do all kinds of cool stuff, which you can then export these um, track point data to After Effects. But it's much more difficult to work with this kind of workflow. Also, this is for non-commercial use only. But still, something you should check out. And go check out my Google Earth Studio tutorials on my channel. I show you how to work with this inside of Adobe After Effects as well. I'll link to that in the video description. 
Okay, so there you have it. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. As always, if you did, please hit the thumbs up button. And if you want to see more cool map tutorials using Adobe After Effects, please subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. Check out my Monday Maps playlist. And once again, if you created something cool using this technique and you want to share it, please tag me at Boonla's video, and I'll see you in the next one.